Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Magma Ridges episode 58. Uh, we've been gone for a while, but we are back now, and we're going to be right back into our weekly schedule. Uh, there's been a lot that's happened since we've been gone. I mean, it's been almost over a month already. There's been, uh, you know, a nerf for the Witchwood and like big meta changes as a result. So we're going to kind of uh, cover a lot of the, the stuff uh, more slowly over time. We're not going to go too in depth and have a three hour episode today. Mm -hmm. um so yeah we'll we'll go forward with that uh in the future um but as to why we were actually gone uh it was because i was away for basically a whole month in europe um but we'll get back to a little bit more of that a bit later um for now uh let's just look a little bit at the overall post patch meta which uh you know obviously the patch came out relatively recently uh, and what it's really done is thrown a lot of the um, a lot of you know archetypes into the, the meta at the moment. It's kind of like a, a, a almost just after a release, right? We're seeing lots of archetypes um, playable in a lot of classes. Uh, a, a lot of the decks are really just unrefined at this point, I would say. I mean, Druid is the one that really stands out to me with like six or seven you know viable archetypes. Um, but there's also been a lot of old decks that are kind of making a comeback. So yeah, so some of the old decks come back. You know that we we saw like a while ago, but now coming back, uh, good old Taunt Warrior. You know who doesn't love some good old drag hero power? Um, <laughs> co uh, the classic combo priest. So you know with divine spirit in a favor. We in saw a fire, uh, yeah. divine fire. Yeah, that's the one. No, we divine spirit in a fire. Yes, <laughs> divine spirit in a fire. <laughs> we saw we saw it before rotation, but like after rotation, we it kind of died because it lost a lot of its parts. But we see a resurgence in that. Yeah, and then obviously, uh, you know, one of your favorite decks, uh, good old Miracle Rogue, the deck that they can never <laughs> kill. Yeah, well, I mean, after the nerf to Caverns Below, I mean, if you really want to be making four fours, you may as well just play Felderized Strider rather than uh, trying to complete a whole quest to get there, right? And I mean, that's largely what it's about. Miracle Rogue is kind of taking Quest Rogue's place as an anti-control deck. Um, obviously not quite with the same uh, polarized matchups as, you know, uh, the Quest Rogue was. But, you know, we'll be covering a lot more of the decks uh, in the following weeks going forward. Uh, we want to keep today's episode a little bit lighter and a little bit shorter. Um, so we're also not going to be, you know, giving our usual Magma Rages tip to keep you from raging. Uh, we'll keep that as well for next week. So make sure you tune in then. Um, we're, we're also both been quite busy. I mean, I, I've been back to streaming as well, uh, usually on uh, Monday and Tuesday nights. Uh and then sometimes Fridays as well. Uh, and then on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I've been casting ESL Southeast Europe Championships. Uh, and this week as well, you're going to be joining me. Uh, you joined me for part of last week. Um, and that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, how have you found the, the, the game so far? Uh, so far, it's, it's been quite, uh, you know, it's been quite enjoyable. You need, like, I haven't been able to play that much myself. So being able to just to watch some other guys play, you know, it kind yeah. of keeps you in the loop of the meta. You know, I think I've seen enough uh, games of Shadow Walk Shaman. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Shadow Walk Shaman kind of went like both different ways on the two nights. So like yeah. uh, I think when when uh, on the Wednesday when playing when you were casting with me, it, it tended to win a lot, I think. And then on yeah. the Thursday, it just tended to lose a lot. Really? So uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. I mean, these players have locked their deck lists. Um, so... You know they're not going to be changing them we're going to be seeing exactly how it pans out and there's a varying you know choices for strategies like more aggressive lineups more anti-control lineups and then there's some you know anti-aggro control lineups and then there's just some greedy control lineups as well so it's actually it's quite interesting the the variation we've got in this group stage at the moment um, and then when it comes to actual news this week, uh, there was an Arena Insights update. So a developer insights from one of the uh, developers working on Arena, I'd assume. Um, they didn't, it didn't come with a video this time, but it did come with like a, a post that has some nice illustrations about um, how some of the, the systems in uh, Arena work these days. Obviously, there was a big change uh, when they removed when they changed away from offering cards based on rarity to now offering them based on these kind of uh, buckets they've developed around power level um and there's some big changes coming to that for for patch 12.0 um 
Um, but in the more intermediate future, we're going to have some some smaller patches uh, with some intermediary buckets in patch 11.2, uh, which is going to have like, um, let's say there were three buckets before, they're going to have, you know, overlapping buckets that would bucket, that would, um, let's say, um, contain cards from two of the the previous buckets that were you know adjacent to each other in power level if you if you were to put it like that so yeah. it's going to offer more variation in the cards you see offered with other cards yeah to add a little more basically just more levels essentially right yeah just to stratify it a bit more so it's a bit more diverse yeah because one of the problems that could happen is you know some really good card might be offered in a bucket with other really good cards but it was just never as good as the other cards it was being offered with so now when you're kind of allowing it to cross the buckets a little bit more that that card that's maybe at the bottom of the top bucket might be now you know the best pick in a in a new overlapping bucket that involves uh, that card and maybe some cards from the lower bucket so it'll increase variation in in picks a little bit because of that um but the, the full post goes into details about how the whole bucketing system works. So we're not really an arena-focused podcast. Obviously, you know, as always, we'd recommend the Lightforge for that, uh, for very in-depth arena analysis. But you can also just check out the, the post, which will be in the um, description for some, you know, a, a shorter summary of, of that. Um, and then when it comes to local South African news, we've had uh, some Tavern Hero action going on. For a while, we've had some... Uh, firesides happening at the the nexus um yeah. that you've been involved in but uh this weekend or this last weekend it kind of culminated in a tavern hero qualifier so how did that go it actually read really well um so i actually played instead of organized this time we managed mm-hmm. to get uh, we got 21 players which is actually really good yeah. and managed to actually acquire quite a few of the you know local players who haven't played for a while managed to wake them from their slumber and get them to play <laughs> so hopefully you know we can just keep growing it uh, I uh, MDK won it. He actually he's he's been doing quite well in the VS Prem League as well. Okay. Uh, I, unfortunately, I lost in I lost to him in the loser bracket semi final. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, I just you know I try to host these events kind of once a month at the Nexus, and you know so far they've been growing quite a bit, and hopefully we can just you know I encourage anyone you know in this so these are specifically in the Joburg area at the Nexus in Randburg, you yep. know to come through. You know, check out social media, check out my Twitter, my Facebook. <laughs> I kind of post, uh, you know, post updates and post, you know, when the next one's going to be. Yeah. So if you're on the kind of uh, Joburg or, you know, possibly Pretoria, if you're willing to drive. Uh, I mean, you yourself also kind of come from Pretoria for the, the events, although you yeah. mostly stay in Joburg on the weekends. But um, yeah, so, you know, if you are in those areas, you know, go ahead and check out the Nexus and you can also meet up with Pandemonia himself in the flesh. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we're also going to be having some firesides happening in Cape Town now um, at the Luck Shack in Milnerton uh, traditionally a place that hosts a lot of uh, card game events a lot of Magic the Gathering Yu-Gi-Oh Pokemon uh, all those kind of games uh, as well as even like board game nights and stuff like that so now they're going to be hosting a fireside gathering starting this Tuesday which as of us recording this on Monday is tomorrow, uh, the 5th of June. Um, but if you're not able to make that, just, you know, one, like Panamonia said, keep a lookout on my uh, Twitter and social media and the, the Hearthstone South Africa Facebook group. Um, and we'll update you as to when the, the next events will hopefully be, you know, if, we, if we're able to get uh, support from the, the players here, then we can hopefully make it into more of a... A consistent event like you guys are having at, at the Nexus and I mean that seems to be going well so let's hopefully grow the, the Cape Town scene as well Yeah. Uh, and then when it comes to international events um, we had there's been quite a lot going on in esports uh, we had you know obviously it's been a while since we've been uh, here or well, since we've ha- had the last podcast um, so there was DreamHack Tours uh, which is also part of the reason I was away. I was actually at DreamHack Tours, went to go uh-huh. and compete in that, which was really fun. Um, Maverick ended up uh, coming out as the winner. Uh, I actually, man- actually played him in the Swiss rounds as well, which was you pretty fun. You beat him. <laughs> yeah, sure. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. Um, yeah, myself, I managed to make a top 16, which I was super happy with. Um, I've got some... 
uh, articles I've written uh, from my experience and some interviews and stuff that'll be coming out soon. Uh, so once those come out, we'll add them to the description on, on YouTube as well. Otherwise, once again, just watch uh, social media and uh, eSports Central, which is where the, the article that I've written at least will be coming out. Um, and then... Uh, there was also Titan R that happened the week after. Um, I was actually chatting to some of the players at DreamHack Tours about Titan R, and that was quite interesting because they had to submit decks um, for the event before the patch had come out, but the event would be post-patch. So <laughs> they had to submit with the nerfs in mind, and it was quite interesting hearing like players like RDU and Muzzy discussing whether Quest Rogue was still going to be a thing. You know, mo- a lot of the people brought Combo Priest, and honestly, the the decks from that are not not decks I would necessarily take to play on ladder now, as we've had a bit of time actually being able to play with the patch. We've we've seen how uh, the metas evolve very differently to that, but it was a very interesting you know kind of it's tournament really from that perspective. Right? Yeah, yeah, from like a theory craft perspective, which was interesting to see. Uh, and Orange managed to walk away the winner for that. So, you know, that's good getting this um, some like EU representation in big uh, Chinese tournaments. Uh, it was, Titan R was uh, essentially an invitational uh, in China. Uh, I think he actually... Frozen's parents. Uh, yeah, well, they're, they're involved in it, yeah. And I mean, Frozen was on the casting desk for the Chinese stream and stuff as well, I believe. Oh. Um and there was also a gold cup, I believe, that happened afterwards, which is like a very big uh, 1,024 person event that happens in China. And I think Orange made like top 16 or something like that. He he also got quite far in that. So he seems to be doing well in China. And I mean, <laughs> it was also in the, the Shanghai um, uh, like... Uh, event right the the shanghai i, I wanted to say major <laughs> but i've been watching too much dota um <laughs> in the shanghai like um seasonal championships the the one that was hosted there that he actually made it to worlds right if i'm not mistaken that was the one he and purple made it wasn't it i think so oh my memory is a bit fuzzy now my- uh, either way i mean uh, china seems to be treating uh, orange pretty well uh and then this last weekend there was dreamhack austin uh amnesiac managed to win that uh with zelay coming in second uh that top eight was particularly very stacked um you know it was just really well-known players playing against well-known players for uh most of those matches and there was some very interesting games in that final with like token druid mirrors going to fatigue and that basically (laughs) being the game plan for both players not to play their card draw not to play their uis It it was quite interesting um they were, you know, long and maybe not the most entertaining games, but I would still uh, advise people very to go ahead and check them out. Yeah, very very educational for, like, different ways to think about a matchup. Uh, I mean, maybe we'll we'll cover some more Token Druid in the weeks going forward. But, yeah, um, that is all that's happened with esports. There's the Seoul uh, twist up. Uh, it's in South Korea coming up soon. Uh, we're actually going to have a South African player playing there as well, uh, Menlin, who lives in Korea. Uh, he's going to be taking part, so oh. best of luck to him. Uh, hopefully, he can, uh, you know, do well, score some HCT points, and, and qualify for the uh, seasonal. Well, yeah, the season, the next seasonal playoffs. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's all we really have for this week. Uh, pretty short episode, certainly by our standards. Uh, and then <laughs> I, I think next week we'll be back into it with uh, some longer episodes, some more deck breakdowns. So if there's any specific decks you want us to maybe cover that you're having trouble with in the new meta, um, feel free to you know tweet at us or comment on YouTube. Um, and obviously uh, follow us if you want to find out about the events uh, and the firesides happening in the, the respective regions. Uh, you can find Pandemonia at Pandemonia ZA with a three and a zero instead of the f- E and O. Uh, and you can find myself at Dib underscore gaming. Uh, and then obviously just, you know, uh, like, um, subscribe all that on youtube as well uh come check out my stream as well that's uh, d1b underscore on twitch uh and yeah i mean just uh let us know any kind of feedback you know uh, maybe uh if there's other interesting news that you think we missed whilst we're away and you want us to cover it uh let us know about that uh but otherwise i think that's all we have for this week yeah a short one 
unless you have anything else you want to add nope. okay uh well yeah thanks a lot everyone and we'll be back next week with uh magma rages episode 59 cheerio cheers